What's going on guys? Welcome back. Uh, this uh, this video, it's the following day, we are getting ready to uh, put the tubs back in MJ's car. I also got to finish, um, yeah you got this side cleaned up, but I got to finish getting all this BS out of mine. I got to finish getting the trunk out of it and stuff. Um, but I did, quick little update before we start doing that and I'm going to show you guys how we did it. Um, Quick update, tore apart the 6.0. It's actually in really good condition, but one rod bearing is a little funky, and I don't know, um, you know, I'm just some uh, loser that does this stuff in his garage, so I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, I built the motor in my Mustang like three, four years ago, and it's still running. Obviously, there's a lot of crud on here, but the only thing that really concerns me is not the wear obviously it's worn a lot the crank seems fine um in that area like there's literally nothing that your fingernail can drag on or anything like that um but let me see let me set the camera down real quick oh, i got oil all over my hand oh my gosh um the only thing that really concerns me is the fact that it doesn't fit in there very tight and I don't know what that possibly could be. I don't know if that means it's a spun bearing, but it doesn't it doesn't look spun. The crank is fine. The crank is fine and everything like that. Um but it was you can kind of see if I push it on this side, there's a gap over on that side and on the bottom. I don't know what that is. Um like I said, I'm just some guy that does this in my garage. Let's see if I can show you this one. You know, when I push it on this side, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that, but there's a gap there, and it's like it's too small. And I don't know, <clears throat> I was reading some stuff online, which of course is always the best place to find uh, the best and worst information you ever found in your entire life. Um, but I can't even remember what it is right now, uh, what, are, you know, what a cause of that could be. It was on a forum, so you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt, obviously. Um, but most of what I learned was either from YouTube stuff or uh, from forums and just trying to gather as much uh, information as possible and then just kind of streamlining it. But if anybody, what, whatever, that's not, not the point, but if anybody uh, kind of knows what that could be, I think it's probably going to have to go to a machine shop. I'm probably going to get new bearings for it. If the new bearing fits in there fine, I'll probably run it. Um, but if it's a little funky like that, I will probably have to take it to a uh, machine shop, get it to, get it checked out and stuff. Everything else just has your normal wear and tear on it. Um, it's actually pretty good. I think this motor had 200 something thousand. I don't know for sure. I need to go get another pulley puller. I've been wanting to buy one, uh, but I just haven't had time. But So the plan real quick while this is all out and while we're talking about it, um, if the new bearing fits in that uh, rod, fine then I'm probably just going to gap the rings and put it back together. And what I want to do is just put my old my old tick tick stage two boost cam in it, uh, my good lifters and my good LS9 head gaskets, swap all uh, of these over to all my valve springs over and stuff to uh, the 317 heads that came on it. And that's about all I really got done to that motor. Uh, it's nothing else really crazy. Um, I really, I want to put a trunnion upgrade on this, but I don't really plan on revving it really high unless I get ARP rod bolts. But that's going to bring me to another point real quick while we, before we get into anything else real quick. If this rod, if something's wrong with any of this, uh, I'll probably just put ARP rod bolts on it. If I do that, it's probably going to become a little bit more of a race motor. A motor you can drive anywhere, but it's going to have a lot of, I mean, honestly, in my opinion, rod bolts on this motor uh, with good valve train would take a lot of RPM and uh, 
with the turbo that I have would make a substantial amount of power. Uh, I think easily a four digit uh, engine on, you know, like a mid range boost setting. Uh, we'll get into that. I'm hoping to have all this back together. <clears throat> I don't know, probably somewhere mid January. Um, right now it's not even Christmas yet. Uh, we got a few weeks actually. Uh, so hopefully in like a month, I'm planning to get all this back together. I'm probably still going to run the same stock converter. Uh, it seems to me that there's another thing a lot of people say online. They hold up to like 750-ish uh, horsepower, give or take. I mean, it's all, like I said, got to be taken with a grain of salt. But uh, the only thing I plan on doing this is kind of cleaning it up, painting it silver, and then... Like I said earlier, if everything checks out okay with this, all I'm going to do is basically just paint this block Chevy orange. Um, that's about all I got planned. So without further ado, I got to wrap this thing back up uh, so we don't get metal shavings all in it. Although we are pretty much done with it. I did wrap it up before, um, but I got to get started on this. Uh, so let me go get some cardboard and I'll show you guys... Uh, after I get a couple of little things done on my car, I'll show you how we're gonna fit these tubs. So. All right, what's going on guys? Uh, I didn't really film a lot last night. I got a ton of stuff done on my car. Um, I ended up, I think I said I was gonna use cardboard templates. I kinda ditched the idea, but to show you guys how I got this far, um, all I did well, I remember telling you guys in the first video also, I was going to trim it to go with the factory, uh, like floor line, I guess. And, uh, I still got a lot to do over here. These aren't even welded in or nothing yet, but to show you guys where I got with this, the tub comes actually all the way down here and it follows this frame line, but I didn't want all this to be, uh, just covered up in like a, a shit collector basically. <laughs> so... I'll show you guys what we did because we're getting ready to fit the tubs on MJ's car. Um, all I did was line this up in there uh, just like it is on this side and we traced the floor and then uh, the only reason this says add two inches down here is because we're going to cut around this, cut some little uh, I guess relief lines in it so it can fold real easily, easily. and we're going to fold it uh, underneath this part so this you know so it's basically a patch all in one MJ put a lot more time into his frame rails in mine it looks a lot better but uh, that's okay um, I'll just have mine look like shit mine. <laughs> but uh, so what we did at this point is I cut these and I cut them I don't know quarter inch give or take uh, kind of extra along that line and then we went ahead and uh, I guess put the, uh, I don't know what this part is called, but I know this, I think it's a Pittsburgh uh, seam, but went ahead and did that. I'll show you guys how we did that in a little bit. He's not here yet. It's definitely a two-person job. It's a pain in the ass, uh, to say the least. The first one we did on mine, yeah, uh, it kind of sucked. I got to finish these and like finish the, the metal work on them and stuff. The first one sucked for sure. Uh, but then after we did it, it was pretty easy. And like I said, I'm going to show you guys this, but all we did is get this first corner in, hammer it in there, and then use a pair of ice grips uh, to hold it in there. And that, like, completely changed everything. Some people said to pre-form this and stuff, but uh, it was kind of a pain in the ass when we tried to, like, pre-roll this to fit this. Um, but yeah, when he gets over here, I'll just go ahead and show you guys uh, how we did that. But uh, vice grips are your friends. And then I don't have a hammer and dolly. I'm getting ready to go buy one, but I just use like a regular ball peen <laughs> and a flathead. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna go finish, uh, go get some stuff, make sure that those look really nice. I think they look fine already, but you know, making it look a little bit better. Camera's probably not even gonna pick it up. Uh, just smoother. I just want it to look really appealing. Um, because my plan is honestly putting all the plastic back in here. Um, at least this back section, probably putting the plastic back along this section. And uh, I'll get over the, the trunk layout we're going to do with the fuel cells. And uh, 
the battery and the nitrous bottle and everything, but the plan is to put the plastic, well, let me rewind. I'm going to try to find a can or cans or paint code for Canyon Red. That's the interior color on this car. And uh, from the factory, a GT350, this is a true GT350, uh, they are like every bit of crazy red on the inside. And uh, I'd like this car to go back to that. But so the plan is to find a close match to the pack to the factory paint. Uh, well, I guess the the interior color, paint the whole interior that red, and uh, I'll probably even go as far as painting the <laughs> the Kirky seats, the aluminum seats red. It'll still have a black seat cover on it, but um, you know at least it'll all be red. That's I think the factory. You know I want it to be nice. I want it to look factory, but I want it to be a you know modified vehicle. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but uh, I'm going to go ahead, uh, give him a call, a couple texts, and uh, I think he's actually going to the junkyard. It's supposed to freaking snow, and I think he's going to the junkyard. Uh, so hopefully he doesn't tell me if there's any other 6 O's or anything there. But uh, yeah, I'll get back to you guys when we start doing that stuff. If anybody knows, one last time, if anybody knows a close color to Canyon Red uh, in a can, let me know. Um, I guess, you know, a normal paint coat would be fine because I could get it mixed and uh, that would be okay. But if anybody knows how close of a color that is and like dupla color or Krylon or something, uh, feel free to let me know. So I'll get back to you guys when he gets here. So I'll see you guys then. All right, what's up guys? I decided to not be a total jackass. I went and bought a hammer and dolly set just from Harbor Freight, just the cheap, it's like a $40 set, and I just used it to straighten uh, my wheel wells on my car, but uh, MJ's on his way over. I went ahead and got these cut, and this is uh, just to fold over on those spots that I told you guys about where it needs a little bit of patches, um, or it needs some patching, I guess. Uh, so we're getting ready to put this on. So when we do this, Actually, I'll probably just film it when he gets here. Um, so yeah, let me just get, when he gets here, I'll start filming again. All right, I told you guys I was gonna film it. It fucking sucks, we're gonna look like assholes probably. But you know what? That's okay. Why is this working so good now? Because we're in the presence of millions. I'm still a fan of the flathead, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna do body work just like, oh fuck. That asshole's using a fucking flathead. Probably couldn't see any of it. And when we try to film this next time, it's probably gonna be ass, so. I 
I worked way better than yesterday. So, basically got our tub made, and I'm gonna go back around, hammer all these other spots in, and just go real slow, and it's kind of a really boring, loud-ish process. Uh, but I'm gonna get both of these fit, and then I'll show you guys what I did to measure the tub width uh, on the other one. It worked pretty good, so. Can you explain that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just showing up late. Yeah, it's all right, I mean. That one's big, that's like a big patch. They're just patches that we're folding over that technically, hopefully work. So, we're gonna get started that on this. for life, dog. I know, dude. Oh, yours is gonna be a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we can't even test fit it. We gotta, all right. Why can't we test fit it? Huh? We gotta show them how I measured. Explain it to the people. Get your square out. Not the Malboro Red in your pocket. Get your, <laughs> get your square out. That was pretty good. Was it? Yeah. You like it? Now this is gonna be a pain in the ass on his car. I don't even know. I need a smaller square, I think. Yeah. I got a hundred. I need a regular size. I got that reference too, but it wasn't as funny as first. Take it. <laughs> oh, this is a pain in the ass. We gotta switch sides. Wish you had a hatch. They're cooler anyway. Hatches are cooler than hatches. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll let the people decide for that one. Everybody likes coops, hatches, cooler. Actually, like the old Mercury, Mercury Capri, way cooler than both. That's the same as mine, eight and a half. So that's, let me that's smaller than yours. Mine was eight and a half. No, the passenger side was bigger. The first side was eight and a half. Well, it was eight and five eighths. But we're just gonna chalk that up to differences in cut. So all we did, set the square on there. Measure from our cut line out. I think the tubs are like 11 inches wide. Um, so I guess you could technically cut out further, but then you get into all this webbing and stuff. But I don't know, this is the way we did it. It said leave a half inch from the webbing, so that's what we try to make it as close as possible. It's a little bit further down here, but all we did is just measure the width then. MJ put that square on there, measure across. It's about eight and a half. Uh, but I cut mine, was it a quarter inch or eighth inch bigger? Uh, I think it was quarter. Quarter? Yeah. Uh, Might have been an eighth, who knows? I think I measured an eighth. We did it last night, we don't remember. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're gonna cut these and then show you guys how we fit them in. So, it's gonna be loud and stuff, I'll just show you guys when we get done. So. Plus we gotta change this. We got what? Hey, that'll work, that won't work. So. Got a little slag on the lens. MJ, I got a little slag on the lens. Oh shit. Yeah, on the bottom. I don't know if anybody can see it or not. All right, my camera died. But hopefully there's no slag on the lens. This thing looks bent too, doesn't it? Maybe it's not. Can you see anything? No. All right, dude. Um, <clears throat> get the light. It's in there, isn't it? Or no, it's not. You all right, dude? Yeah, you bet. It's right here. I got it. All right, so we got these tacked in. All completed. I gotta put some more little welds on them probably, but this one turned out really well. This one not the best, but that's all I'm gonna show you that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we got them in. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass on a uh, coupe, but uh, you know, it's not too terrible. We got some uh, we got some more little fitting to do, and uh, we got to seam seal everything and stuff like that. But uh, it's not terrible. I'll show you. It's where we bent over that bottom piece, and I got to weld that on the bottom. Uh, but that turned out pretty good. So now you guys can probably see where this line is at now. Um, 
There's some other little stuff we probably got to do, but there's a lot of cleanup on the frame rails MJ has to do on his car. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and plate this here and here. And uh, it should turn out really, really nice underneath here. Are you gonna undercoat this? Plan on. Yeah, I'm gonna undercoat mine also. But yeah, we went ahead and skipped and got this done because we did it on my car. It was a pain in the ass. Even though it's a uh, hatch. Yeah, for some reason it fucking sucked on my car. Um, this was the first one we did and we actually had to cut it all the way back out after we got like halfway done because it wouldn't fit right. But uh, neither of us are really big on sheet metal work. And uh, at least it's done is all I have to say. But uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on trying to mount this uh, coilover bar, but that's gonna be another video. All I'm gonna do tonight is probably clean because I'm cold, now my belly's full, and I'm probably not gonna do much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that fit up and uh, kind of get an idea of where shit's gonna go. And then I will, uh, I'll get back to you guys when I start doing that stuff in another video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned something. That little vice grip trick on the end of these was the best thing ever made. Dude, it was a lifesaver for sure. I can't. But my tubs went eight times faster we, than when we did yours. I know. We had, how long did it take us to fit both these tubs? Well, it took us like 20 minutes on the first one. I'd say at least 20. Well, yeah, probably 20 minutes. That and one was we, probably 10. We got a little bit of hell with the second one, but it went a little bit faster. 10 or 15 minutes, maybe? And it took us like two minutes to put mine together. Yours, each one combined was like five minutes. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. But yeah, we had to not be a hack. <laughs> I'm not telling them. All right. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And... Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one when we start mounting up all this fancy cool shit and uh, <clears throat> probably a little quick rundown actually of everything. I'm gonna get this coil over bar mounted, get it mounted on the axles, or mounted on the axle, uh, get it back sitting on the ground and then I'm gonna be able to mount all my shit back here. I think with MJ, since you're buying a $15,000 million rear end, uh, we are gonna get the rear end in his car and then put the coilover bar on and then by the way if anybody's looking for brackets yeah i'll sell them. coilover brackets and uh we'll see i might use them on the truck to be honest with you I might buy them off you and use them on the truck and uh just to put this out here teams they were looking for a sponsorship yeah no shit, well, right it would be awesome this money over here i know um but, what the fuck was I saying? Oh, Talk about it. I think it might be cool if we do, since we're waiting on your rear end, uh, we can get the coilover bar in there, get it squared up, because it should be the same. Uh, that won't move. No, that should be good. And then we can get the fuel tank, which you need to order one. But we can get the fuel cell and the battery back here. And that's all that's going back here on MJ's car. And then we can fit the big panel that we're going to do over this. And then we can run the fuel system, wire it, and start it. And then we can do almost all that without the rear end in there. So that's kind of just the quick little plans. And uh, I'm still working on the 6L. But that should be together in the next, I don't know, month, hopefully. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully you guys. Still sitting in the corner and not touched. I know. I haven't done nothing. I gotta gap the rings and there's some other problems you guys might see earlier. I can't remember what I filmed or not. Alright, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.